Hello, and welcome to a very green High Rollers Uncharted territory. Uh, welcome back, it's been a couple of weeks, but we're back. We're ready for some excellent D&D fun. Uh, this is our spin-off mini-series uh, called Uncharted <laughs> Territory, uh, playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition in association with Wizards of the Coast and their brand new module, Ooh. The Tomb of Annihilation. It's not out yet. Yeah. It's not out yet, it's out in September, um, along with a whole bunch of cool other stuff, including a version of Betrayal at House on the Hill, uh, which is all D&D oh. themed. Um, there's going to be dice sets, there's going to be new miniatures, loads and loads of cool stuff is coming, so loads of really fun stuff. Would you all <laughs> like to watch more D and D things on Twitch? No, Boy, yeah. would we? Yeah, yeah. thank you, Matt <laughs> Topolo, who knows all the answers, correct questions. Um, <laughs> on Monday, My on words. Twitch.tv forward slash D N D. I've killed Katie already. On Twitch.tv forward slash D and D throughout the week, there's loads of cool stuff you can watch. On Mondays. You can watch Greg Tito and Shelley Maznova on Dragon Talk and uh, doing loads of podcast stuff, doing Q&As. They recently interviewed Deborah Ann Wall of uh, Force Grey. And, and also Trubal. Dylan Sprouse, who was our lovely guest star. I don't know TV. Dylan and Sprouse. Matt Mercer. I know Dylan, yeah, I know Dylan because we've played Deborah with him. Wall. I don't know who she is. Daredevil. She's in Daredevil. Who's, who's, also, um, who's she? yeah, so they, uh, I think who's recently. She in Daredevil? She's like the main the blonde female. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No. Okay, well, I can't she remember was her interviewed. character name. That's gonna drop. There you go. Right. She was well, interviewed recently. She was interviewed recently. So that's on Dragon Talk on Mondays. <laughs> on Tuesdays, you have dice camera action with. Cr tr is your mic plugged no. in? Oh, for <laughs> every time. Quality broadcasting time. from the Oxcast. On Tuesdays, you've got dice camera action with Chris Perkins and the rest of the Waffle Crew, the lovely, lovely Waffle Crew, as well as the first game of Fury's Reach um, with the Maze Arcana uh, with the Maze Arcana folks. Mm -hmm. um, Ruti and Satine each co-DMing it. On Wednesdays you have Misclicks, Risen, Wait. and then the second game of Fury's Reach with the other DM. And then Thursdays you have, uh, between Satine and Ruti I mean, Thursdays you have the C team over on twitch.tv forward slash hyperrpg and Girls Guts Glory, which is on Thursdays. Fridays you have us, and then after us is our Australian friends the Dragon Friends. The Dragon Friends. Friends! friends dragon Friends! friends. No, do um, again. Why? Why? How dare you? Anyway, <laughs> I am Mark Sherlock Humes, the Dungeon Master for this evening, and joining me, we have Matt Toffolo. <laughs> <laughs> you really have to think about that. Like, uh, Matt Toffolo, Kim Hello. Richards, <laughs> Katie Morrison, Hello. and Chris Trott. Not PewDiePie, as no. some people may think. Are we still doing that, Joe? They've died a while ago. There might be new viewers, Kim. There might be new viewers. <laughs> hey guys, it's nice PewDiePie. Yeah. yeah. How's it going? Um, it's been a couple of weeks. I will try my best to do a recap uh, based on my own crappy note taking. Um, the party are a series of adventurers formed from the Waterdeep Historical Society, and they have been charged to go to the jungle of Cholt to try and uncover information about a lost city called Omu and put a stop to a terrible death curse which is plaguing the world of the Forgotten Realms. You were sent, you've also encountered along the way a traitorous uh, pirate called Laskalar Flisk who betrayed you uh, out in the de Kalashan Desert um, and left you for dead. Um, you have uh, nearly been shipwrecked. You arrived in the port where six frisky flames, the Tabaxi Sorcerer, was nearly arrested, well, was arrested, and nearly put to the death um, after setting fire to a child. <laughs> what do you say? That is fact. <laughs> yeah. Those are facts. I have not It's a weird culture the truth. where they don't accept children <laughs> <laughs> Um However, thanks to some great efforts by his friend Kayla, the half orc barbarian and archaeologist, uh, he was saved that, although you do now owe a considerable sum of money to a very powerful woman. Um, you bet on some dinosaur races, of which Sir Crumsby was quite the winner. Oh, yes. um, won some, uh, a nice pocket full of gold, um, some of which has mysteriously vanished, mm -hmm. as you discovered. Um, and you guys were then put to work trying to win a, uh, an item in an auction, part, a three par uh, one part of three that forms a staff that once belonged to the Queen of Omu. Um, after watching the winning bidder... At Wakanga's Tower. At Wakanga's Tower, you have your notes, well done. <laughs> we uh, saw magic. The merchant gem prince. construct guards. You did, yes, Wakanga has a number of guards. They follow set routes. Oh, Quailian was there. 
the snob with the fez. Yes, there's an elven mage uh, who's a snob uh, and was after the same thing. I bid most of our money on the magic uh, Chaldean spell book. <laughs> Which you now have. Which I now have. Um, I don't know any of this. You don't know any of this. Here. Fear was not there. You were um, patrolling. You were patrolling. However, I... <laughs> Fear's patrolling didn't help you from the person who won the staff, Laskalar Flisk and his Flaming Fist mercenaries, uh, made his way out. You followed him to a bridge in the in the city of Port Nyanzaru. A stone bridge. A stone bridge. <laughs> where <laughs> he was uh, ambushed by not only yourselves, but a group of Yuan T snake women uh, snake who attacked. People. I freaking love snake people right now. They're, Mark. they're in the module. I, I didn't. <laughs> Blame wizards! Every campaign. Every campaign will have snake people in it. Um, the ambush went down. Uh, you fought against the Yuan-Ti and a few of Laskar's forces, managing to uh, steal the staff that part he had, recover the gemstone, and keep hold of your own one at the same time. Thanks to the invisibility... Of Favor, your tiefling uh, ally, <coughs> who is kind of here to help you and is kind of uh, sort of a researcher, librarian, archaeologist. Um, you took all the parts assembled, uh, met up with Fia, uh, and took her to the villa of Jessamine, one of the merchant princes that you are working with. We also put it together and it did a big burst of energy. And that was where we left things. And I heard, let the spirits of Vermu guide the way, whoever holds the staff may enter the tomb, something like that. You did. Yeah. Um, and I believe Favour was the one who was holding the staff at the time. Yeah. And we jump into that very moment. Uh, as the kind of pulse radiates out and you hear this kind of phrase in your mind, um, Favor leaps back as the staff, the, go the red gemstone you'd inserted into its golden spherical head, um, now that it is complete, the red gemstone glows and a ruby beam uh, projects itself out onto the air in front of you. Inside the villa uh, itself, a map of Cholt, very similar to the one you guys had before, is kind of projected in magic in the air. Um, nine points of light are spread throughout the jungle, um, each one with a glowing symbol, um, each depicting some sort of strange kind of tribal carving of a creature. Um, the three of you, so that's Fear, Kalar, and Six, you guys give me history texts. Cromsby, you weren't here when they discovered this, as this is something they discovered in the prologue, so you would not recognize it. Eight. You are not here for history. Uh, Where is gold? I probably don't care about Twelve. either. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Twelve, you've probably got the best uh, grasp of six. Looking at the symbols, you actually recognize um, two of them. Um, you recognize them from symbols that were placed in the Tomb of Atan, where you originally, well, Flisk stole the staff from you. Um, they represent strange little creatures. You recognize one, which is like a large frog, um, and you remember it was called something like Kubazan? Um, and one which is some sort of like oh. cat with tentacles uh, that is called Shigambi. Um, and you recognize these two one. Most of them are spread quite far out in the jungle, um, perhaps days travel away. Um, but there is one, the closest one to you is the frog one, Kubazan. Um, and it's about a days-ish travel from Port Nyanzaru into the jungle itself. Kubazan. Um, and I can give you, give like that. you guys so a... It's from those... I remember that puzzle. If you watched the, um, the prologue, prologue, prologue yep. where I dared to question the, the DM, DM and, and was one. <laughs> Cooper and the frog. I fought DM and I won. So I'm just Ooh. making some markings on a map to represent these kind of glowing orbs. Mmm, delicious Coca Cola. Seven. My favourite beverage. And Kim's. Not sponsored. I wish we were. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is your you copy of the map. I know they're not super clear, but there are the nine points. This is the closest one with the mark for Kubazan. Yeah. Um, and it's about, you reckon it's about a day's travel. Uh, Favour kind of gasps um, as this kind of ruby map is projected. She's still holding the staff, and no matter which way she kind of turns it, the, the map stays kind of orientated to her. Um, and she begins, like, excitedly pointing out Stand a few still, things. Favor. Oh, Stand. yes, sorry, yes. Um, uh, uh, and yeah, the map is just kind of projecting out in front of you. So, looking at this map, we are here, and the closest thing is Kubazan the frog. That's Kubazan, by the way. Um, I, I, there's something, I, I thought that the staff was supposed to lead us to Omu. I don't understand why it's showing us these, these nine individual points. Maybe, Favor, we must think outside of the Chaltian box, so to speak. 
Maybe these are pieces of the key. Do we have to go to all of these places? Or maybe before we get treasure. Maybe they're all there. There could be different entrances to the same tomb. Well, I hope so. That's a hell of a lot of work. What's your favorite Mm. animal? Well, what's the closest one? The frog, Kubazan. Well, frogs it is. I'm not going all that traveling. I'm sure Kayla could uh, carry you. No. No. Oh, go on. I've only got little legs. (laughs) Just a morning workout for you, Kayla. (sighs) Bench press Cromsby. (laughs) I've seen you bench press him before. What's it worth? What? What's it worth? Look, you already owe me enough bloody money. I owe a lot of people a lot of money. (laughs) Yes, precisely. Look at what you're doing to this little group, getting us into debt. Uh, Jessamine, this kind of uh, dark-skinned woman in sort of black, sort of silk lace wrappings, um, snake tattoos, just kind of is like, yes, do not forget that we do have an agreement, Miss Kayla. I do expect payment somewhat promptly. I do like a super elaborate bow and I'm like, of course, my lady. You nearly like knock over some like yeah. uh, cups and plates and things like that that are on the table, yeah. hidden underneath this ruby <laughs> magical map. How I many? would never break my oath to one as beautiful as you. There should be nine. I might have, if I've not put nine, then let me know. And I'll add no, one. there is nine. There is nine. Yeah, good. Oh, she she uh, no, I heard it. She just kind of <laughs> looks at you, smiles, but doesn't really Mark, say ten. anything. <laughs> maybe well one of those i think one of those is from before actually where i marked off something else okay there's nine cool there's nine there's nine cool um the frog is the closest we should go there it's about a day's what does the frog mean it means means. yeah but what does that mean (laughs) Cooper's what do you remember? I mean, yeah, like you may have make and made I, I, the, the. I mean, I would say that that what you've got there from the prologue, that's probably something that six and Kayla, and Kayla would have put in their journal. The, the like made like a, an inscription. I was the only one Remembering. <laughs> you've got a photographic memory. The puzzle said that brave Kubazan despises shrewd Papa Zotol. So where's Papa Zotol on this map? But what does what? what uh, are, are you going to try and look for specifically? Because you can't quite remember the symbol for it's Papa Zotol. It, that is you looking at that. <laughs> she Your remembers history. she solved the puzzle! Okay. I can't help it if I rolled crap. Mm, that's kind of the point of the D&D though, isn't it? Really? Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking bullshit. Um, the, two that, the, the only ones at the moment that you can remember is uh, Kubazan and Shigambi. I can't remember. But what do the what do the symbols mean in general? They're animals. Uh, you guys yes. can give me history checks. Or arcana checks. Ooh. Or nature checks. Ah, uh, here we go. No. 18. 20. 20. 24. Wow, okay, big money balls. So, uh, right. Kayla, you remember, in terms of looking at the symbols, these are all very clearly um, perhaps uh, symbolic animals. Um, each one, like remembering from the puzzle, you know, brave Kubazan, wise Shigambi, um, shrewd Papazo, they probably represent different facets of Chaltian religion or something like that, you know. Very similar to you might worship a god of the storms, you know, perhaps brave Kubizan represents a similar thing. Um, so it makes sense that these might be related. You, Crumsby, mm. you don't go into history and all of those things, like you're mainly a, uh, about treasure. However, what you do think is based on some of the things you've overheard that Favor's been babbling on about, you've glanced at a few books, it probably makes sense. You do remember that there is something referred to as the Nine Shrines. Shrines tend to have treasure, do tend to be guarded and somewhat protected, um, but if these are holy figures, as Kalar suspects, um, it could be that these are burial chambers perhaps, and could therefore have <laughs> some substantial mm. wealth. You just drew a little frog. <laughs> Six. You are... Aww. Arcane knowledge is your thing. You love to learn about magic and the story. One thing which you remember seeing in the Tomb of Atan, and you remember this strange lich-like figure referencing some things similar, and some of the books that Favor's been reading regarding the heart of Uptau. Uptau was once the god of the Chaltian culture, and Omu in particular, but something caused him to fall, and in his place, nine trickster spirits kind of rose to power. Um, those tricks, you suspect that these nine shrines, these nine figures, are those trickster spirits, um, kind of minor gods as such. Um, but they seem to have vanished, um, seemingly their power taken away. So they're not fragments of Uptal, they are taking his place. Yes, it seems to be. And they're trickster spirits. They were known as the trickster spirits, yes. But some were not always 
trickster in nature. Kubazan, for example, is brave. You know, each one kind of had like a thing which made them unique. I relay this to the team and also say, that's probably why everything is hidden by a puzzle. Because they're trickstery. Mm. Tricksy. In probably means there's some nice treasure there as that well. That's true. Hidden behind walls of blades, fire, crushing stone. Sounds exciting. Skeletons. It's got everything, honestly. Let's go. Uh, okay. Um, Favor kind of is like, uh, and then the map kind of dissipates. Can you control that? Uh, yes, I seem to have the ability to, to activate the map as necessary. Um, uh, you want to go into the jungle? Yeah. Um, it's quite... Uh, it's quite difficult. Um, it, uh, supplies, I'm not... I can go if you really want me to, but it's not really my forte. You fought very bravely in that battle yeah, against the snake people. I hid and then I stole something off a man who couldn't see me. I'm not sure that quite counts, but the jungle is very different. They're undead and dinosaurs and you have to camp outside and there's insects and it's very wet and humid and... It's What's that the problem? Description. It is. Right. It's not really Sounds what great. I, um, well, I suppose if you want me to go, um, we might need some supplies. Could we get one of those big lizard fellas to carry us around? Uh, <laughs> uh, Jessamine is like, you of course could purchase a riding dinosaur if you wish to take one with you. Oh, that sounds good, doesn't it? There are a number of traders in Port Nyanzaru. Unfortunately, it is not my specialty. One of the other merchant princes deals with uh, livestock, but. You should not have much trouble finding someone willing to sell you a pack animal. I'm not walking after you while you sit on a dinosaur and have a lovely leisurely time. It's not happening. No, 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 we'll get one of the big ones, you know, like a people carrier. <laughs> <laughs> Are there dinosaurs that carry one? <laughs> I mean, you've seen the size of these things for you. You saw the dinosaur races, things like a Triceratops or a Stegosaurus. Yeah, like if it was like mounted with like seats and things like that, they're huge. They could easily carry like eight, nine people. <laughs> yeah. They do everything okay, no. hurts. <laughs> Very well. We will retreat temporarily. Get supplies. To gather supplies. Okay. And get a big dinosaur. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, Port Nanzaru is pretty much 24 hours. It is late evening. Do you guys want to rest or do you want to go out and secure supplies now? We are post battle, aren't we? So, probably best to rest. Yes. Right. Fear, okay. you came away unscathed in that battle. So, yes, what were you up to? Seven days. Mm, stuff and things. Days. Stuff and things, Nine eh? Days. Yeah. What sort of stuff and things? Oh, just exploring, doing things, Stealing. avoiding. D yes, did you get, get anything? Anything good? No. Mm. Mm. Never trust a thief. Mm. Um, I don't trust you. <laughs> That's your decision. I will you say, bring me along. with this taking this as a long rest, uh, it's been nine days since you left Waterdeep. You do know that there is a time limit. Twenty, right? Twenty days until she dies. Until well, your benefactor passes from the mortal realm. Um, perhaps forever. And then there'll be no gold I for anyone! I was just staying in that massage parlour. Um, <laughs> you don't. You can go back and stay there if you'd like, or you can stay in Jasmine's villa. She's happy to provide rooms for you. I booked two nights. I gotta buy one, get one free. <laughs> so I'll be staying at the massage bar. So you want to head back there? Yeah. Okay. Just six. Mm. I'll stay at the villa. Do you want walking for me? I've done enough of that today. I'll go. Yeah, with room, rooms are prepared for you. So Kayla's gonna go with six. I'll stay at the villa. Maybe we'll stay at the villa. Split in the party. <laughs> so we we'll wake up in the morning. Um, no, you guys actually sleep. Um, Fairly soundly. Uh, the jungle is unusual to get used to. The noise of the city never stops. There are no things like, you know, thick wooden, you know, uh, shutters to block out the noise. Windows are normally a drape over a stone hole, so it is loud. Um, alongside the noises of the city, of people going to and fro, merchants hawking their wares, you have the constant loud humming drone of insects coming from the jungle. There are roars, like dinosaur and animal roars, constantly through the night, um, and even the occasional kind of scream um, from out in the jungle as well. Uh, it is not the most pleasant night's sleep you have ever had. Um, however, it is a long rest. You may spend hit dice as you need to. 
If you've taken any uh, damage, don't forget that you don't automatically heal at a long rest. You need to spend um, hit dice because I find it a bit BS if you just magically heal overnight. Just so. need to use one. Okay. That's it. I'm at four hit dice. When do I, I get half? You get half back when the long rest as well. So you get half your level back. So you'll get three back this time. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. I've got one hit dice spent. Cool. Nice. All right. Well, in the morning you wake up. Um, what kind of supplies do you guys want to get? What do you think you're going to need? Mosquito spray. So insect spray. Insect. Yeah, some sort of repellent for the skin, I guess. My fur is fine. Mm -hmm. Some kind of a shade for the sun. Shade for the sun. The dinosaur. Water and food. Parasol will provide that. Will the dinosaur have a parasol? It will. I imagine if it's a huge dinosaur like he's requesting, it will have some form of platform on its back with which we can roam around and with sticks on the sides and a parasol material top. I'll ask for one. Yeah. I've seen them roaming around. No, oh, okay. So, and I'm sure you've got limitless wealth with which to purchase it. <laughs> right? Yeah. The money so. man. <laughs> For things like enough insect repellent for the four of you plus favor um, for a couple of days, like one day there, one day back, um, it's going to cost you two gold each. So it's basically, uh, you know, a gold each time. So it's going to be two, four, six, eight, ten. So ten gold for some insect repellent. You find a kind of bazaar um, with a bunch of different open tents. Loads of people hawking different things, and one man seems to be there. Um, again, that kind of darker Chaltean skin, uh, kind of loose, loose clothing, long kind of like um, hair, kind of tied back with a bandana. Um, he seems to be offering some sort of cream, which will uh, dissuade insects from biting on you and things like that. Um, so, if somebody wants to spend ten gold, you can have enough for all of you. Eight. I don't need it. Eight gold. You don't. You don't wish some. I don't need it. Very well, yes, eight gold for the rest. I've got fur. Ah, very well. If you believe you do not need it, my friend. Are they burrowing insects? Yes, oh, they dig beneath the skin, they crawl up inside you, and come out of your eyes. I'd buy it, Six. Do you remember that time that you got fleas? Yes, but that's fleas, that's different. Don't tell it. They'll have something like this in the jungle. Come on, shell up. We don't have to deworm him, do we? I'm not putting my hand up a cat's anus. <laughs> I'm afraid that the ways of the tabaxi are somewhat strange to me, my friend. I do perhaps I do not know the methodology of curing such illnesses. Well, he's your pet. You can do it. Not a pet. Fair enough. I'm no pet. Are you buying some? Very well. So ten gold. Kayla will spot me. Oh my god. I'm out of money. <laughs> I already owe like. Oh, here you go, my good man. Here 20, you are. Ten gold. Ten. Take the ten gold. <laughs> Um, food and rations, like how fine food did you want to like eat well on the trip, or do you want to eat kind of you know trail mix and things like that? Look, I'm not made of money, so we're just gonna have to go with basics, all right? <laughs> Nuts, one nut a day. <laughs> so it's basically, if you want just like really basic trail rations, it's gonna be five copper a day for everybody. Um, so however many days you want. Yes, whatever gets us to the tomb. Gotta think about these things, you gotta be preparing explore oh. explorers. Mm -hmm. How long is it gonna take us to get to this bloody place? One day. One day. However, exploration. We don't know where we're going after that. Yes, exactly. Let's assume we're gonna be here for the 20 days. Yeah, in my experience, it's never a day. Oh, Someone right. falls into a trap. So, 11 days worth. Please. 11, 11 days, days worth times, times four. four. Times five. Six. Times five. So, that's gonna be. Does favor need to 50, eat? 55 copper. It's yes. going to be five silver. Yeah, it's about like six silver. Right. Six pieces. Each. No, the whole party. Whole party. Yeah, for you're 11. buying things like nuts and dried jerkies, like dried dinosaur meat and things like that. It's pretty cheap. Fia and Kayla can go hunting on the way to get some prime rump. Oh, good idea. Yeah, you, you can hunt uh, food. You can hunt <laughs> I'm in the hunter. Same way you can put it find anything you need like water and things like that as well you can carry water skins obviously but you only have one water skin so if that you know you might need to find water you might need to salvage um anything else you guys want to buy while you're here parchment uh for all the if there's any beautiful ruins i wish to draw them we can draw on the back of a leaf there'll be plenty of those out in the bloody jungle you can't draw on a leaf that's absurd well you can try 
I could try it. Pull the bark off the bloody trees. That's fair. You could scratch the trees with your claws. Yes. I'm Make a barbarian. Wow. Well. Couldn't get the intricate details of the ruins <coughs> with my claw. I've tried. Yes, well, I'm sure you'll cope. Fine. Okay. Anything else? Or would you like to go dinosaur? No, I want to buy a bloody dinosaur. <laughs> okay. Um, you have to search around the city. You actually have to go outside of the main city to the edge of the jungle where they have these huge kind of almost like stables, these paddocks, um, big stone and, and wood kind of fenced buildings. Um, and you hear cries, the thundering stomp of hooves. Um, you hear a few kind of shrieks and calls. Um, one man has got a pack of what appeared to be what we would think of as Velociraptors, but they're called uh, Dinicacus, I think, or something like that. They're the slightly larger versions of Velociraptors, true. Um, he's no, got like correction. a pen of them together, and has got like ropes between their necks, and he's kind of dragging them and healing. But they're, <laughs> they're hissing and clawing and things like that, and he's trying to whip them and beat them into shape to try and get them into this pen. Um, you can see behind, uh, there is an old kind of looking Triceratops that's being plodded along, big heavy saddlebags on its side. It's big sort of like uh, three horns, um, two of which have been blunted, but it's single nose, one still seems quite sharp. Um, all sorts of different creatures. Uh, there is a, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Um, an Ankylosaurus, which is with a large plated armoured back with a big yeah. heavy hammer uh, tail. Yeah. One of those is there. Um, and that seems to have like a basically a, pal a palaquin um, kind of strapped to its back with a small seat for about four people with a little canopy. Um, and he oh, seems yeah. to be speaking to a... Uh, a nobleman, uh, some richly dressed, lots of gold jewellery, and um, he's trying to sell it to him, and they're haggling over some sort of price. Um, yeah, you can see that there are various traders around. What would you like to do? I stomp over to the nearest trader. What'd you say? Here, hey, good man! I want one of these big dinosaur buggers. It turns around, uh, and you can see it's a very um, effeminate looking man, kind of dark skin, but kind of very thin features, high cheekbones. Beautiful kind of head wrapped scarf. Ah, oh, yes, my good man, hello! Yes, he looks down. How can I help you? What kind of creature are you in the market for, my good sir? I want a big bugger that can carry the five of us. Carry five of you? Yes. Ah, mm. You aren't intending on taking this across the sea, I would hope. No, we're going into the jungle. Oh, well, brave adventure. And he slaps you on the back, uh, gently, you know, kind of gives you like a little light tap. Well, of course, we can look around here. Um, and he starts looking around the paddocks. He calls over a few boys, speaks in the native language, sends them off kind of thing. He's like, well, I'm afraid for five of you. Uh, he points over to the man arguing about the Ankylosaurus. I'm afraid this one is in the very current method of being purchased. The only thing I have is one of my most rare and treasured beasts. Oh, yes. Ah, long friend of mine. It has been with my family for generations. Uh, and he takes you over. I just want to check that I've got the stats for this. <laughs> when you have dinosaurs in the monster manual, it's always pretty fun. Is there dinosaurs in the monster manual? And in um, Volo's guide. Huh. Yeah. I've got to get past all the dragons first, though. Let's just get a dragon. Oh. Never knew that. Horror zombie dinosaurs. Oh, a combo. Vampire dinos. Mm. That would be interesting. I'm dead. That would be cool. So hysterical. Have you heard about the zombie caterpillar epidemic that's happening in England right now? Yeah. So apparently, they've discovered that something like a parasite or something is driving caterpillars mad and forcing them to climb up, similar to the cordyceps that well, they get the ants are getting yeah. but it makes them climb to the top of wherever they are and then they just explode and spread the spores oh on other God. caterpillars Ooh. so turning oh, the, 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 that's the cordyceps yeah but it's happening to caterpillars Something in England very right itchy. now <laughs> uh, it's the last of us all happening at once <laughs> it is um, spore creatures Jesus Christ have you found the dinosaurs? I have. <laughs> I have found one of them. Um, he takes you over uh, to... Uh, it is not as large as the Ankylosaurus. Um, it is a large... I'm trying to remember which one is an Allosaurus. I'm trying to remember which one it looks like. That's the one with the like long back thing, I think. The, the, the back spine of backs. No, 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 it's got like a... Oh, that's it, with the long sort of like... The, the yeah, thing like a mouth. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got like a kind of beaky, yeah. beaky face. Yeah. Um, it, it's a, an old-looking Allosaurus. It has a palaquin on it for about 
two people. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's kind of strapped to its underbelly. He's like, I'm afraid that this is the only one I have available to purchase at the moment. You would need to barter, and he points towards the, um, the Ankylosaurus. My good man for that. Uh, or, of course, and he gestures to the old-looking Triceratops, which does look like it's a bit knackered, but is large enough that a palaquin could be fit onto it. I could have something made for you to accommodate my my old uh, my old trihorn. Well, they don't call me a Cromsby for nothing. I'm not travelling on an old bloody thing like that. I'll march over to the person <laughs> bartering. Okay, yeah, you kind of march over and they're kind of having a heated argument. Uh, the man kind of looks down, he's like, yes. How much is he offering for this dinosaur? And he like scoffs for a moment and the noble kind of looks down, clucks his teeth and is like, kind of looks at you kind of sneeringly. Um, <laughs> my good sir, this man is a friend of one of the merchant princes. He has offered me 200 gold. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How much of course would you be offering, my good man? Uh, 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 right, uh, <laughs> excuse me one moment. Okay, chaps. They, kind right. of, they laugh to each other and go back to haggling. <laughs> right, how much money have we got? I don't have anything. Right. Kayla, you're already in debt, so, uh, <laughs> fear, come on. Actually, no. Don't hold out on me, you must have a few coppers on you. <laughs> I do have a ruby worth 100 gold. Ah, see, this one knows what she's doing. Come on, you must have something. We want, a, we want one of these big things. We don't want that bloody triceratops over there. I was up for just watching you try and fight your way through the jungle for a day, to be honest. Well. Uh, you can have a ruby. So that's 200. That's 200. All right. I don't want that. It's not gold. So how much is he offering? I've got rent to sell. A 200, my good man. 300. 300? Yes. Looks back at the gentleman, the gentleman scoffs, talks it like, seems very angry and like points at you a lot, but they're kind of talking in their own language. Um, Kayla, you get the gist that he is very unhappy with Cromsby. Uh, and he does not like being upset. Can I just like go behind Cromsby and just sort of like, you know, I'm just flexing my muscles a bit. You, you know, want to give me an intimidate? Looking a bit hench, you know. You want to give me an intimidate? I'm giving you an intimidate! Give me that intimidate. Oh. Natural intimidate. <laughs> he kind of like, you're like cricking your neck and like, Stretching a bit, getting the old muscles working. Uh, the noble who was like being very vicious kind of oh, takes a, a few steps back, uh, to which the other, the trader, seems quite amused. He's like, My good man, if you have 300 gold now, I will send it to you. It looks like the person you're haggling with has walked away, so it's probably back to the base rate of 200. Uh, he just gestures, he's like, he looks, the, the man is intimidated, but he's not backed away. He's just like, I'm pretty sure that if you and your friends leave, my good customer will be back to uh, trading for what could I he, wish. Kayla, could he come back with a punch in face? <laughs> oh, definitely. He looks the sort. He may not walk. Mm. A number of guards start appearing. <laughs> you are still in the city. <laughs> I would not recommend that you inflict any... Well, if you walked in the tree, upon my is what I'm suggesting. <laughs> yes, of course. Punched by a tree. Yeah, yes. might fall down some steps. You <laughs> foreigners have some strange sayings, but uh, I think that my customer, he taps him on the shoulder, is quite safe. But if you have the 300 gold with you now, I will give you the, the creature. I'm going to go and like inspect the dinosaur as if, I, if, as if, yes, as if I'm a learned yes, man who yes, knows about these come things. See. Uh, it is a fine specimen, as you can see. Mm, Very powerful yes, haunches, yeah. and he taps it. The creature's like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, the palaquin is uh, very basic. It's made from like a light wood, but um, it's all been painted beautiful colours. Um, kind of a thick, heavy canvas on the top. The seats are quite velvet, laden with cushions. Um, there's definitely room for at least four, maybe five at a squeeze. Can I look to see if I find any defects or sure, anything? Give me, give me a perception check. Discount. <laughs> Discount. <yeah. laughs> uh, perception. That is. Ooh, that is 17. 17. You look it over. The creature's in pretty good health. It looks quite hale and hearty. Um, but you kind of notice that, yeah, there's, there's wounds on this thing, like it's been in a fight. I'm not really sure about this one, you know, I mean, it's what? looking a bit, bit tatty around the edges. 
Chatty, my good man, this is a fine specimen. I have no idea what you mean. Well, look at him. I mean, he's, he's getting on a bit. I mean, we're off into the jungle. What happens if we get so far and the poor thing dies oh, on us? He taps it on, the, taps it on its armor plating. No, no, no. My friend here, he has survived. In fact, if you are heading into the jungle, I can think of no better companion. He is uh, a stalwart and hale and hardy. He's, Felt off many creatures in such a place. Ah, uh, you see, that's what I'm talking about. If he's seen a lot of action, perhaps mm. this time he might, um, well, you know, no, bite the dust. No, 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 no. I, I guarantee, I assure you, he is a, a loyal friend. Oh, I'm sure he's very loyal. Yes, yeah, he won't. What be about if his old dicky ticker packs in? You know, <laughs> he slaps it on. He's just like, you will not find a, a healthier beast. Mm. Yes. While this is going on. <laughs> mm. Can I cast Speak with Animals? It takes you a long time, but for the sake of RP, I will say yes, you can. Okay. Yeah, so sure. I'd like to talk well, to So you kind of take please. a moment, you harness the power of your ancestors, you think of the creatures back home, and you kind of get that deeper level of understanding, the kind of jungle seems to come to life around you, and yeah, you think that you can probably communicate with this creature. Okay, can I kind of settle up to it and just be like, hey, dino friend? And it looks over at you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. It is un... You can speak. Yeah. In my <laughs> tongue. And yes. you guys just cheer, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> and Kaylon's going, rah, rah, rah. Just let it do a thing, it's weird. So, do you like it here? I need to think how intelligent this thing is. Because <laughs> you can speak to it. Doesn't mean it's very smart. Dial intelligence. Uh, intelligence of two. <laughs> <laughs> they give me food sometimes. I like food. Are you happy? <laughs> I don't have food. You see that man over there? I'm going to point to the other guy who's <laughs> bothering. Yeah? Yes? He wants to own you so he can beat you. No. He will take away your food. I know, I want food. He and it starts stomping and getting angry. But if no. you No If you come with us, we will feed you as okay. much as you want. Okay. Man, he like tugs at his little chain. Rope not make me go. Okay, we're trying to own you, but okay. what we need is for what you is own? to bring you with us. We okay, I you. come and then it. <laughs> no, not let me come. I need you Mwah. to scare off the other man. Uh, at this point, the man is like, "What are you doing, creatures?" It's like tugging on its chain and it's like moving around and making loads of noise. He's like, "What is? Come, calm yourself, calm yourself." Ah, uh, see, what are you trying to pull with this bloody animal? Hey, it's your friend. He's making it strange. Stop, stop your noises. You are agitating my friend. You are agitating my creature. Stop it. Uh, scare man, okay. Um, and then he just swings his tail into a large kind of like cargo that's just been piled up nearby. His massive hammer tail just goes <laughs> and just smashes it all over the ground. Um, the man who was the that was previously haggling like leaps back. There's a big sort of cry. Everybody's like looking around. The owner is just like, what is this? What yeah. have you done with him? He's a pretty dangerous beast, isn't he? He like, like, goes up and he's like trying to stroke him. He's like, no, no, my friend. Um, and like the, the dino's like, no, this my friend. And he like nudges at Kayla. You talk to me. <laughs> this one does not talk. Seems like he wants to come with us. Uh, he like looks at you. He's like, you have bewitched my creature. No. You strange foreigners. No. No. 300 gold. I don't trust it. Look at this, it's an unruly creature. Yeah, fine, 250. I mean, where's the other barter? It's gone. He you know, looks around. He says, fine, 200. But I will not sell it for any less. I know I can get the same price, even if you leave today. Well done. I like the cut of your jib. I spit in my hand and she kiss. Like, well, it seems disgusted. <laughs> Strange. Feyrune custom. Ugh. There you go, and I give him the two rubies. Oh, now them. these are quite nice, actually. Quite fetching. Mm, yes. Pockets those. Um, seems to be quite happy with that. There you go. Very Make well. Per right. Uh, he takes off, uh, gets a key out, starts unchaining a number of locks that have been kind of keeping this heavy chain in place. Um, 
takes it off the, unwraps the one from the creature's leg. Um, he gives you a big sack, which has got like these kind of, it's almost like a turnip. Right. But it's kind of got like a sweet smell, um, and it's full of them. And as soon as the, the Ankylosaurus is like, food! <laughs> And it's like sniffing at the bag, it's like, no! Nah! It's like opens its mouth. I'm gonna feed it. You just pull out one of the turnips, ah, and it just mushes it, and I'm just like, like, nom, see? Nom, nom. Every day, I will nom, feed nom. you. I'm good. I like food. And it kind of like hits you and like sends you a bit flying. Um, it's quite strong. You yeah. get the sense that this is a very strong. But approach. like, you know, I show affection by like, you know, nudging. Bang! Like, you know, so. It like know. bangs you back. Yeah. Um, uh, Are we going to die? Oh, dinosaur. He's adorable! Catman! <laughs> and then it kind of like stomps it's towards six. It's roaring at me. <laughs> 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 he just wants to say hi! He yeah. likes you! Nah, oh, rub his face! It like licks your foot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting face. on its back. <laughs> Sniff its backside! That's how they say hello! No, you can do that, you weird man. Well, no, I'm not an animal. Yeah, into the right. palaquin. Yeah. Yeah, you can like, the armor plates for you are like super easy to climb up on. Um, everybody else might actually require a bit of help getting up onto it, uh, but you can just. You climb up into the palaquin, lovely, luxurious cushions. Um, it's definitely, yeah, like I said, there's room for about four, five if somebody sits near its head, they can probably kind of like ride it properly. I'm suddenly gonna jolt to the side and look down at Kayla. Have you got my blanket? From earlier, remember I requested it from the Water Deep Society. Did we bring it on our journey? You didn't bring it, did you? No, I did. Didn't did you? You no, didn't go and get, get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. Come on, quickly. Don't mess around. My blanket. Give Six. Him something else. I love you a bit, but I have just saved no. your life. No, don't tell me the blanket's gone. Ah, oh, you need to grow up. How dare you? Stop being such a child! How dare you? You know what that blanket means to me. Are there any, like, blankets, like, dinosaurs sleep on or anything? I mean, there's, like, rugs and stuff. <laughs> it's like, in terms of that they sleep on, no, they sleep on the ground. Yeah. These are, like, pack animals it kept be, outside. Like, you know, a horse, like, you put a little blanket These on. These guys don't seem to, like, you know, they're not caring for their dinosaur. <laughs> they're like, I'm selling this dinosaur to that man, <laughs> and then he can give it a blanket. Is there um, anything that could look like that? You can go out to the city. You could easily buy like a rug or something like that or a silk blanket. Um, um survive. Fa Favor is just like, I have a blanket too. But it's like a kind of traveler's kind of blanket, like one you'd put on the, like, a, a where you'd put your camp mat. Throw it up. We can share. She like holds it up. I'm gonna put it down. Yep, start needing. <laughs> 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 Takes a while. So yeah, just circling around. I'll get back to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you realise that's what do we call this it? thing? I, I'm I thought he just. Oh yes. Oh, yes, I suppose no, it is. Yeah, it's, no. Okay. It's done. I've got a cloak. It's fine. <laughs> she kind of gets her traveller's cloak out. I'll sleep on this, I guess. If you want it back, just let me know. I'll beat the shit out of him. She looks up at it and like can hear like. <laughs> <laughs> Like him rubbing himself all over it. She's like, no, I, I'm okay, actually. I'm, I think I'm fine. I, I don't think I want that back. You could always snuggle up with me. Uh, 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 are we ready to go? We got supplies. Yes, uh, I think we're ready. Oh, good. I'm going to climb up into the... Okay, to the so you're going to need to give me an athletics or an acrobatics but, check. I think I'm good at climbing. Oh, you, you're your thief, on you? Yeah. You, so I can, straight up. Yeah. You like very much like six, you kind of like get a grip on the plates, hoik, swing your legs up and you just clamber up. We're gonna shout down to Crom. Come on! Come on, Crom! I will Have you get? make my way. So what is it? Uh, so athletics or an acrobatics. However, Crumsby, yeah. for your stature, <laughs> I'm gonna give you disadvantage. I can throw you. I can throw you. Oh, so that was twelve. Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. You may be chubby and you may be small. But that doesn't stop you from getting to your chair so you don't have to walk anymore. You're like... Yeah. <laughs> you kind of like do a little hop. Little and, you kind of, and you pull yourself up um, into a position. Oh, see, I'm still the youngest heart. Oh, damn You're back. sweating profusely. Yeah, it's like dripping off of him. Your back's gone a little bit. But you got up there. Yes. Oh. Oh, no. Faber kind of is like... <laughs> manages to kind of catch on and kind of like, in, in a very ungraceful manner, manages to like haul herself up as well. Hair kind of goes everywhere, just her spectacles 
um, and gets herself in position. I'll take the blanket. Thank you. That's fine. And she gets like her spell book out and starts reading. <laughs> Just like holds it up. Can I walk alongside the dinosaur yeah. to start with? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. How long do you have with these to speak with? Uh, it doesn't last very long, I think it's like an hour or something like that. I think it's, is it That's 10 still minutes? Long enough. It might be 10 minutes, yeah. Don't remember, I think I've got it. I've got it's it not long. I've got it bookmarked. Um, I should use D&D Beyond. <laughs> you could do. Or I could just use this sticky page. Yeah. Speak with animals. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yep, so you get 10 minutes. Um, I'll have it soon. So, I'm gonna... <laughs> Carry on. Uh, I'm gonna just walk beside, like, kind of lead him. And like, just I'm gonna pat him on the nose. Uh, yeah. just, it's like, it's, yeah. it's like as it kind of stomps along, it's like, oh, no tree, <laughs> <laughs> oh, tree. <laughs> it just does that every now and then. Just like stops. I shall call him Martok. Like, occasionally, he's like, don't like that rock, and then his big tail just like smashes into something alongside. Um, and he just Great. stomps along, basically. Great. Um, and you guys want to just head off straight into your expedition? Oh, this is weirdly bumpy. Okay. The Ankylosaur, as Kayla is now named Martok, uh, stomps his way and you follow a path using your map that you've been given um, from uh, Lady V. Uh, you follow mainly along a river um, that leads uh, as close to where you need to go as possible. And then you have to cut through the dense jungle. Um, the jungle itself is hot. Uh, like it, it's wet, it's a wet heat. Um, it's your your clothing is soon soaked with sweat. Um, it is humid. There is no escape from the sun. The shade is giving you direct things, so you don't burn. Um, but it is still uncomfortably warm. Um, all around you, you can hear the strange sounds of the jungle. You can hear kind of insects, uh, monkeys. You can hear animals shuffling around. There are some points where you think you can hear like undead, like you hear like, but they never seem to emerge from the foliage. Um, and that's pretty much how the entire day's travel goes. You make your way along, you stop, you eat some of your rations, you drink from your water skins. Um, the ankylosaur kind of just munches on some vegetation nearby. Um, you give it water and you carry on going. Um, there's a couple of main things you do occasionally see uh, worn statues, but they're so faded and crumbled that it's hard to see what they once were. But clearly some sort of old statue or perhaps some sort of signpost or warning system. You're never quite sure what. But it looks ancient. Ancient, like thousands, you know, really, really old. Um, but none of them, there's no writing or anything there. They just kind of almost look like stone figures just carved and left in the jungle. M most of them are obscured by the vegetation, which is everywhere. Uh, there are points where, and I'm guessing it would be Kalar because you're walking alongside the beast, you have to physically get out your bat left and start hacking paths. The Ankylosaur does a good job of just like, big foot stomp, crunching loads of branches down. Um, but there's points where it's so thick you can't scout ahead and things like that. So Kalar kind of chops through the foliage and makes her way. Um, as evening draws, the jungle is still incredibly hot and muggy and wet. Um, what are you going to do for camping? Uh, the night comes down fast. What's your plan? Who's sleeping where? What are you doing? Kayla, does this dinosaur sleep? Yes. Can we sleep on it? Yes. In the parasol? Mm. If not, I'm going up the tallest tree. I would say four of you can, or four or five of you can ride, sleeping to be comfortable, only two of you would fit up in the palaquin. I'll go up the tallest tree and nest. Watch out for snakes. Do they climb trees? Yes. And monkeys. Oh my god. And koalas. <laughs> uh, I'll go really Drop high. bears. That's what you really need to watch out for. Drop bears. <laughs> 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 just trots out of spine. They just hold onto the trees yeah. like koalas and then, and then they, they just drop. drop. Like a cannonball. Yeah. Oh, damn, drop bears. <laughs> drop bears. Isn't there a legit thing? <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. Okay. Um, so, what's your plan? Mm. So, you're going to climb up a tree. Yes. You have a climb speed. You don't need I, to make checks. Yeah. Um, and then, what? You're going to try and find some branches, stretch your blanket out, and, start, and try like, and. Crunching down leaves and stuff and just nestling it into a, a nook between the branch and the trunk. Any, mm -hmm. Like a big, wide branch. Okay. Is there anything that's like enough for me to curl up? I mean, on? these the trees here are humongous. Yeah. These are colossal, you know, redwood style, like thick, 
the branches are almost like spider webs. There are points where enough of them kind of cross each other over that you can build like a basic kind of almost like a little platform, um, and then you just stretch the blanket out across that. that. Yeah. I'm probably going to climb a tree as well. <clears throat> Climbing tree as um, well. And also securing myself so I don't fall down in mm -hmm. the middle of the so night. Like ropes. With my grappling, yeah. like my and rope grappling from hooks that. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, okay, so you two are up a tree. You're going to sleep in the dinosaur. I've already you? kicked the boots off and okay. I'm getting down to sleep. Okay, yeah. Uh, if nobody else is going to take it, Favor will try and sleep next to Cromsby. Um, I do snore, mind. She kind of is like, oh, she like starts looking around. But You I might want to stick some leaves in your ears. She like looks down at the ground, looks at that, and then it's just like, uh, hang on a moment. Um, um, oh, no, I've got it. Silence. <laughs> and then there is no sound. <laughs> It's like you're just like, <laughs> and there's no noise. Um, dropped basically around the dinosaur. There is a 15 foot radius of no sound <laughs> for an hour, which is what she's hoping she can fall asleep to. Perfect. Uh, Kayla, what are you doing? I would like to. Um, can I just like? I guess the ankylosaur. It kind of just beds down. It yeah. kind of you know just stretches out. Kind of gets down on its all fours, almost like a turtle. I'm just gonna like just I don't lean on it and yeah, like, sleep. Yeah, you can kind sleep of, next to its head yeah. and stuff like that. Um, it is a little bit uncomfortable. You can do that. Okay. So is anybody taking guard? Is anybody watching? Um, taking I can watch? take first watch at the top of the tree. Yeah, I was just watching. Do watching. you guys? You don't have to have anybody take it, but if you would like to. I think I, I would probably be on guard. Okay, so you want to take one of the watches. So two of you can split it out. The only difference with you is you need eight hours of rest to get your spells back. Okay. I'll do it. I say I will, and then I... You're will. a half-elf, right, anyway. I mean, they don't have trance, but yeah, you can kind of get by on less sleep than a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I will totally watch from up above. Okay. I, I don't I, trust I fall him <laughs> All right. Um, so in that case, I'd like everybody to do two things. The first thing is going to be a constitution saving throw, but because of your precautions with food and the insect repellent and stuff like that, you all have advantage. Excellent. Fourteen. Uh, 11. 11. 18. 18. <clears throat> 24. You're actually all fine because you took the precautions. Um, it's not particularly comfortable sleeping up in a tree, but being off the ground, the insect repellent keeps things like flying insects and stuff off of you. Um, the hot, humid weather is tiring, but it's not. You're kind of struggling through it. The next thing I'd like everybody to do is, um, well, actually, you two, not you two of you who are, no, you're not on watch, you're watching. <clears throat> Perception check from you, please. Uh -oh. Me. No, from fear. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Uh, uh, Eleven. Okay. Okay. Um, this one is bad. During your watch, fear, you're kind of like trying to keep your eyes open. You're looking around. Um, the one thing about Chult is the gr the kind of jungle canopy obscures much of the, the the sky. But what you can see is just covered in beautiful stars. Like there's no light out here. You can see up, and it shines down beautifully down upon you. The light of the moon, um, uh, just you know, descending down saloon's light, kind of blessing the world in her kind of white radiance. Um, you begin to hear some noises, but you kind of don't pay much attention to it. The jungle is so loud, like these insects are just like constantly going, monkeys, noises, animals and everything going. It isn't until you basically kind of, huh, you catch, you look down and see on the back of the palaquin where you stored all your food, there is a number of monkeys and they're just like pulling food out and then when they, they're like, ah, 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 and they just scamper off into the night. So they're already gone. You basically catch them as they they're like they're like ah and then they run. Is off. there still food left? Uh, there is there is some. They raided it, but there's there's food left. They've not taken like 20, 11 days worth, but they you probably suspect that they've taken maybe a couple of days or something like that. Um, but apart from that, there are no Darn. more incidents in the evening. I'm it's too just tired, monkeys. so I'll just. God damn monkeys! <laughs> okay. Yeah, you basically awaken the next day. Um, Crumbsby. Uh, there is a strong smell of monkey everywhere. <laughs> uh, probably monkey Very pee, oh. just everywhere. Um, 
very strong pungent smell. <laughs> uh, the dinosaur also has obviously urinating things and is, is a very strong pungent smell He's as well. A good boy. Bloody hell! Ah, we should have invested in some perfume for these bloody things. Christ! Smells better than you! <laughs> um, and I'll pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> I smell like a man! Stinky man. Sweat and pickled onions. Homeless man. That, that, you're right, that's, a, that's the smell of a man. Mm, Pickled onions. Musk. <laughs> musk. Um, you do notice as you go to get food, there is about two, three days worth of your full total taken. So you're down to eight days worth of food for the group. Mm. Um, the monkeys got in and raided it quite considerably. Little kind of spider monkeys just like grabbing what they could and rushing off. Um, well, well done watching, you two. I watched the whole night. He didn't watch. He fell asleep right away. Typical. Sounds like you. Knew we should have had a dog person, not a cat person. Have you seen dog people? <laughs> no, but I'm sure there's some around somewhere. Well, we found bloody giant lizards to ride on. I guess werewolves. Well, yeah. there are also bird, I mean, birdmen, the Aracoca are Oh yeah, are, we are see around. Them. It is not unreasonable to think that somewhere there could be some, some uh, canine uh, humanoids. Sure you'll go back and see if you can find another animal to swap me with. That's a yes. very good idea. I'm, I'm, I'm merely making the point that it, it is conceivable that there might be one that exists. I, I don't want to swap you, Six, not at all. Great. Shall we move on then? Yes, that's very wise, yes. Right. Um, shall I use the, the map staff to see how far we are? I guess so. Yes? I don't know where we're going. <laughs> uh, the map kind of zooms in. As you're now out in the jungle, it has shifted, um, and now it kind of is focused the point. You can see where you are, this kind of oh, little glowing dot. Oh, does it give a point dot. where we are? You yeah. are here. Um, you are here. And you can see that it is perhaps, you know, maybe a few hours travel away um, towards the mountains, which you can just see poking up amongst the jungle canopy. Um, as you guys are making your way, Kayla, are you still walking alongside the dinosaur? Okay. You're going to give me a perception check first. Everybody else, give me a perception check with disadvantage. Eight. Nine. Well, yeah, I forgot you've got no wisdom, do you? I'm dumb. Twelve. Twelve? Nine. Nine. Eight. Eight. <laughs> uh, Kayla, you are busy chatting away with your dinosaur friend. Marta! Marta, who's just like, bah, he's just chatting to you about nothing. He's very dumb. He's not intelligent whatsoever. Um, but he's quite, he's just a gentle beast. Um, perhaps a little stronger than he realises, uh, as he often crushes things that he doesn't mean to. Um, kind of lets out a whoops, as he like <laughs> crushes like logs and things like that. Um, Where's my, I want food. And then he eats on a big turnip and he's quite happy. Um, Fia, you're the one that notices this, but sadly, uh, not until you think that they've become aware of your presence. Up ahead, through a bit of the jungle, you can see six kind of hunched, orange-skinned, black-haired figures wearing sort of like rags and bones um, with spears. They're small, probably about the size of a halfling or a gnome with like kind of tattered ears, flat noses. They look like goblins, but not like the goblins you're familiar with. And they're kind of like, it looks like that they've been doing something with some sort of like weird statue. Does it look like Danny's Oobla? Yes, they look like the ones that we saw at the Stream of Annihilation, the okay. Batari goblins. Gotcha. Uh, they kind of like look around, um, they see something coming, and then they attempt to disappear into the jungle. Did you see that? What? The little, the little goblin things. No. Ugh. There's goblins. There was about six. Do we see any of them where they went? Can I have a uh, so as Martok carries stomping through the forest, he kind of breaks out into the clearing that you kind of think you spotted them in. Um, and there is a kind of crude wooden effigy of some sort of goblin figure. Um, it's kind of got like two coconuts for breasts, a large <laughs> bulging stomach made from some sort of like large like gourd or some sort of thing. Um, it's got like a spiky headdress. Um, with vines uh, draped down instead of hair and in, in one hand it holds like what appears to be like a large spear and then in the other one and is actually real is a head um, of somebody from Faerun so some sort of like um, traveler from your lands um, it's holding the hair and you can see it's all been tied around these kind of wooden hands and it's he like typical kind of decapitated head look well that's unusual no blame I'm sure they're friendly uh, and there is a, were, there are tracks all over the ground as well. They were wearing bones. 
How about just we wearing all them? get in the parasol and make sure we don't die? Kaylar, get up here. Kaylar? Oh, fine, I'm goblins are gonna get Kayla, in here. Kaylar, get up. Can I look at the statue and see if I can detect it? Religion check. Can I do that? Yes. Anyone can do that. I invite you all. I want to keep going. 20! Jeez. Sorry. Six. I got six. Eight. <laughs> Eight. And you want to give a look out? I want to look around for okay. the goblins. Give me a perception check. More than the sort of the goblins. So with your 20, um, you recognise this almost immediately. This is probably a, this is a statue or an effigy to Maglubiet, which is the goblin god. Um, generally encourages um, conquest, but through sneaky means. It's not like an orc god, which is all about war and you know fighting and challenge. Honor. This is all about sneaky deception, but being clever and killing your opponents and things like that. Um, judging by it, it looks like they were, they were probably praying to it. It seems to be as constructed as some sort of basic altar or some sort of religious statue. Um, this type of thing won't be far from their settlement. They would keep this quite nearby. 23. 23. The tracks, they're scattered all over the place, but clearly there is a to and fro direct, to and from direction. And actually, as you kind of peer through, it's weird. You see something... And you're like, no, that can't be right. Through the jungle canopy, through the clearing, um, you probably kind of climb up on the dinosaur and you kind of try and peer ahead. It looks like there is, you can see some sort of like ramshackle wooden building, but underneath it appears to be an enormous net that's actually, as you kind of like peer through the things, there appears to be a village um, off in the distance, quite far away, maybe, you know, you know, not enough that they would have noticed you, um, but kind of peering through, you can see a village of these ramshackle buildings beneath a big net made of vines and leaves, like a net covering the entire village, being held by a long, like, multi-vine rope to a bent-over tree, a colossal, humongous tree that looks like it's been bent down, and then this net has been placed beneath the village itself. Um, and there's all sorts of ropes. Um, you reckon, the yeah, beneath the village. You reckon it looks like the whole village would get wrapped up into this net and then flung by this giant tree. <laughs> the whole village. What the hell? <laughs> What's that? I'm gonna relay what I said, like, yeah, uh, what you said. She's the- Maglubia. <coughs> Golden God, deception, praying, altar, settlement nearby. There's a village in a net over there. What? You must mean under in it. No. No, what? you'd think that. Am I no, it's, 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 it's on it. What the hell are yeah. they thinking? So, I can show you a little bit of this. Unfortunately, I can't <laughs> show it to the camera. But imagine you can kind of see, like, it's kind of in an open, there is jungle around, but like a large <laughs> net with all these buildings, and then one of these kind of huge trees <laughs> bent over with a long line that looks like it will just bling. Do they really I can't show this to you because it's technically a watermarked document. Do they really think they're going to lure people to this village to then trap them? And I don't think it's going to trap them, it's just going to mm. throw them. Mm. I mean, wouldn't it be better if it was just one small net for a person? Maybe it's, maybe it's their escape plan. Yeah, maybe they're really scared. There's, 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 does mm. it look like it could be these goblins that... Where it looks very tribal. Tribal, yeah. Is it in the direction that we're travelling? Um, you... It is in the... <coughs> it's the same direction, but you could avoid it if you want to. There is... You can easily skirt the outskirts of the village. I really want to trigger the net. No. Are you sure? It's yeah. like, it's almost like I know Chris <laughs> Trump. And it's almost like I know the little things that he wants to do. Just the... the you and your sheer, fire can stay away. The magnitude of the setup involved. And you want to destroy it. a humongous net. We have a time limit. Beckoning us. While I would normally encourage this... <coughs> I'm sorry. And... You're right. Do encourage you it from Thanks. a distance while I watch you <laughs> trigger the net. I can do it on my own. You can watch. No! Me. We have a time limit. We have a lady who needs us. If she, she dies, dies then. And she has all the gold. We won't owe her anything. We don't owe her yes, anything. Yes, but we need she money. She owes us money. But if she dies, we can just take it, right? No. No. She won't give it to us if she dies. 
I need to pay off my debt to Lady Jasmine as well. For saving your raggedy ass. If... No! Alright. If we have time. No. If we have time, you and I can come back. Yes, I like that plan. While I go home. <laughs> and just make little, little gold angels. You can kind of see, like, like, now the fear's pointing out the village, there are like goblins moving to and from the buildings and they're like praising up at the tree and they're sort of like squabbling with each other, fighting each other and things like that. Um, so really very like simple. Wait. This is a trap set on the goblins, luring the goblins in. Someone else is bringing them all to this village. I think it's their village. You think so? They're praying to the tree. It's they like they like don't know the what it is. They don't know it's a big trap. Just one. I mean, the time we spent talking about it, I could have been over there and... No. Right, let's keep going. We're, we're keep, we've kept moving, haven't okay, we? Okay, yeah. Well, I, I assume where? you stopped. But you can, can you can carry on. on easily. That is like a ten minute conversation, and you can just make as, your way. As, so we're gonna start walking, and as we start walking, I'm just gonna like pick up Six's tail and just keep walking. But just think of <laughs> just, it. I'm, he's just doing that while walking back. Think with something. Uh, I'm just dragging his tail with me. We go now. Exactly, Martok. Um, you guys. Just dragging your. <laughs> you guys skirt the outskirts of the Goblin Slingshot Village. Slingshot um, Village. <laughs> Slingshot Village. Right. Uh, it does actually have a name, uh, and if you would like to trigger the Goblin Village, it's actually in the modules. Hey. <laughs> it's not a mark thing. <laughs> it's not a mark thing, this is actually a thing. You guys <laughs> skirt the edge of this um, village and make your way following the map that uh, Favour can conjure on this staff um, that leads to a cave in the hills. Inside the cave, uh, there isn't anything really special. You see more of this kind of ancient stonework probably long ago was perhaps a statue or something like that it might have once been a shrine or an altar but it's long since faded um but as favor reaches inside she's like i don't understand according to the map this should be the place look and then as she goes to activate the map instead the ruby glows with a golden light and in the middle of the cave a portal a spherical portal opens oh you can't see on the other side can you change the lights of the room to immerse us? <laughs> a golden light. <laughs> I forget that I can do that. Yeah. Um, the power. The power. There's only the one thing for it. The portal. Let's go in. After you, Six. All right. I'm just going to run through. You should run through? Okay. Yeah. Excited. What are the rest of you doing? Are you going to follow immediately, or are you going to wait? I'm guessing the dinosaur can't go in. No. Dinosaur can't get in the cave. Okay. Favor um, is currently stood sort of with the staff. Can I say... Can I talk to him briefly? Yeah? Uh, I'd just like to say to him, like... Hello, friend. Martok, we're going to go in here. I can't go in tiny hole. I know. So <laughs> are you going to be safe if you wait out here for us? Where is food? I will give you plenty of food, and there's lots of vegetation around. Okay. There are goblins in the area, though. If they give you trouble... He just raises a big foot. Exactly, just as I taught you. Okay. You gonna be okay? What is okay? Good. Happy. Happy, yes. Safe. <laughs> yeah, he like smashes his tail around. I kill. Good boy. <laughs> okay. Who's a good boy? Me. You. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving a little chin tickle. <laughs> just like stares off absolutely. Yeah. He's not. I leave some food for him and stuff. Oh, he, like... as soon as you open the bag, he's like, ah, 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 eating his turnips. Um, <laughs> How okay. are you in the cave? Is there anything else in the cave? Uh, yeah, you look around in the cave. Um, again, it just seems to be like this. It, you can see what was probably once like a stone altar with this kind of vague humanoid shape behind it, but there's really hmm. nothing there. Um, yeah, you look around, there doesn't seem to be any shape. There's not even any signs that it's even recently been visited. Like, mm. there's no tracks in it. You know, considering how close <coughs> that goblin village is, it's a little strange that they don't come in here. Um, Can I not use my archaeologist skill of, like, historical knowledge or... Uh, generally, that lets you speak dead languages. Who your built archaeology. things? What, why have I written this? Who built things? Yeah, you can figure that out. Uh, you suspect that this is Omuan. You, you suspect okay. that this was probably one part, once part of ancient Omu, the, the okay. nation. So we can't see anything when we look through the portal? No. Nothing but else. Six has vanished into it. 
It's just like a golden shimmering, um, almost like a molten gold. Just like... Six. Oh well, nothing ventured. And I just walk in. And you just walk in? Yeah. So, Crumsby follows in afterwards. I'll follow. You follow? Um, favour? Should... She like looks, she's like, well, I'm currently activating the portal. I'm worried if I go through first, it will shut. So you should go in first. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay you go in. So, let me explain, now that you've all gone in, let me explain what happens. Um, you are now dead. <laughs> let's dead. flip this over, please. And we're going to need to move this dice tray somewhere. Mommy is. Yeah, can you move those temporarily? It's time. Okay. Don't worry about the jack glitch, you don't need to worry about that. So, let's put you all here. Um, there is a flash of golden light around you, um, and then you suddenly find yourselves in a very old place. Um, as you enter, the air is cool, it's refreshing, there's almost a relief as the kind of muggy heat of Cholt is vanished. Uh, it is cool and dry, but there is an, a sense of foreboding at how old this place is. The stonework is dark, cracked, perhaps a little mossy in places. Um, and you find yourselves in a kind of cross-shaped room. Uh, stretching out before you a number of corridors. There's a number of features in this room. Uh, the first being the one that you are looking at as you arrive. In the center, there is a kind of slightly raised platform upon which there is a large dais, a kind of revolving stone um, platform. Uh, four heads sculpted into like draconic heads, all with their mouths open. Um, dark, sinister looking shapes. Um, with kind of black interiors of their mouths that don't quite look natural. Um, and resting in the very middle, on top of those, is a stone sarcophagus um, that just rests upright. Um, and these just look out amongst you. Looking around the rest of the room, you can see on two sides, uh, this side and this side here, respectively, um, We'll zoom out the map at some point because probably need to see it there. Thank you, Sam. So at this side and this side, you can see that at the far ends of the room there is another sort of raised platform with a woman um, looking very regal, crown on her brow, long dress, holding a basin. Um, just a, a, a height that you could easily reach into. Yep, that one and then this one over here is the same so they're thing. they're identical. Oh, they're identical. They, they look identical. On the opposite sides, you can see a very similar looking device. Um, kind of set into the wall on an angle is the screaming demonic face that you've encountered in a number of places. This one looks large enough that perhaps a almost like a, a ball could be slotted inside the mouths. Um, it's kind of got a big enough that a, a volleyball kind of thing could be right. could be placed inside. Um, Favor does not appear. Mm. Uh, you guys kind of find yourselves in this room. I'm already in, so I'm walking around with an ignited hand, using it as like a torch. Mm -hmm. There is a strange uh, light um, that just kind of, that golden light just seems to emanate throughout, you're not quite sure where from, like in, in the ceiling, it just casts a gentle okay. glow. So I'm just looking at the detail on these dragons and seeing if I can figure out a date or a time, an age of when this was created. Sure, give me a history check. Can I see any of my archaeologist stuff? Yeah, I'd say, so, uh, I just want to hear what six gets. 18. 18. So, the two of you both know this is... It's not a Muon. It was probably built after the fall of Omu, but it is very, very old. Very old. I sense. But it was constructed, you know that much. Um, this is definitely purposefully built. There is also no other entrances and exits. This is it. This room is the whole thing. What's on these? Is the portal still open? The portal is not open. There is no portal. You are in this room alone. Uh, those, as you look down, you can see that stretching across each point, there is a faint glyphed writing, uh, ever so slightly glowing um, with a greenish tinge. On the floor. On can the floor. Can I read them? That it appears to be arcane in nature. It is not a language. Mm. Okay. This entire structure is fascinating. That is all. I'm just soaking up, 
just being here. Mm. And there's a sarcophagus. In the Is middle. it similar to the one that, they, that we encountered in the... Similar but different. This one, instead of having a human carved onto the sarcophagus, it is the same figure you've seen carved on on the map and on the stones. It's the shape of a large frog creature um, that you recognise as Kubazan. Now, this being either created by or for Kubazan, we know it to be the brave frog. Thus, we must prepare ourselves. But he's also a trick to spirit, possibly. Yes. So this must be some form of puzzle that involves bravery. Clap just begins to echo around the room, hauntingly coming from everywhere and nowhere. Well done, my cat oh, friend. Oh, here we go. I see you have managed to find one of the Nine's tombs. <laughs> I will admit, I thought that you and your friends would be squabbling over that staff for many days to come. Still, congratulations where they are deserved. Now, shall I explain the rules of my little game? Yes. Mm, you do not waste time. I am pleased, my cat friend. Well, you will already have noticed there are no exits from this room. You may only leave when you are dead or when the challenge is completed. You will see the statues of Napka, the Queen, and the Basins. Once the game begins, one of them will spawn a glowing sphere of energy. That glowing sphere of energy must be deposited into one of the demonic mouths you see. Once you have scored four of these goals, the challenge will be complete. Of course, there will be some Obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just fades away. Uh, and you begin to sense friends. power humming in the room. So this is an actual game, a test of endurance. I fear that we have to put balls in holes whilst fending off enemies. Oh God. <laughs> Don't I mean balls deep, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna need some balls for this one. <laughs> okay. So, as you guys are standing there, the one on the closest one to trot, the woman's basin begins to fill with a holy light, um, and a sphere of pure energy just materializes into the basin itself. And then you hear <laughs> the stone dais with the dragon heads begins spinning at a very fast rate, speeding up and speeding up, speeding up, and a thick black mist begins to coalesce into the room itself. The mist begins to pull at your life force, hurting and draining away. That's going to be initiative for everybody. Oh, shit. So apparently now I can roll initiative with advantage, because I have feral in Sure! <laughs> I sure. believe you! <laughs> So we're playing Lucio Ball, essentially. Oh, perhaps. Technically, yeah. We're playing Death. You'll see. <laughs> death, Murder Ball. Murder Ball. Six. I got an 18. Fear. 12. Kayla. 18. Cromsby. A whopping one. Wow. <laughs> oh, no. Cromsby's like, well, I don't bloody like games. <laughs> oh, I say. Bastard skeleton. <laughs> I um, bet on sports, I don't participate. So, the first thing that happens... This is not the stomach of a man who does much. <laughs> the sphere um, appears in the in the one closest to Trot. I don't know if we've got... Do you want to pop like that Pick on there the for me? Ones. Yeah, gold ones in there, that's perfect. Um, that appears, um, and this black mist begins filling, and it fills the room very quickly, just like... <laughs> um, and you begin to feel it pulling away your life force. Um, it is... Six or Kalar. And you probably have more of whatever than me. I'm going to... Yeah, I have an agility ability. Mm -hmm. I have agility ability. Which means... I think it's a bonus action, you can like do a burst of speed or something, can't you? Yes. So long as I do zero movement next. Okay. So I'm going to... In fact, I don't, probably don't need... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, but... Yeah, I'm going to use this bonus action dash. <laughs> so... 
Uh, as soon as you pass over the glyphs, um, the the spinning statue head spins faster, um, and you hear something drop from the ceiling. By deduction, standing over the glyphs gives us an enemy. Uh, let's try and not do that. Uh, six seconds of speech. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, God. Let's try and... Descending from the ceiling, a rotten carcass of a deformed shape. Once, a large eye at its centre and tentacles with eyes on either hand. However, it has long since been dead and now only an empty, oozing, pus-filled socket (laughs) begins to hover in the air. (laughs) What the fuck is that? That is an otogya, but that's the closest thing to a beholder zombie that I have. Uh, so this floating, grotesque, undead eye creature floats from the ceiling. Um, carry on with your turn, please. I pick up my action. Uh, you grab the ball. My so, as soon as you touch it, your mind is filled with some knowledge of what this ball can do. Um, first things first is uh, you can, yeah, you know that it needs to go in one of these demonic mouths. Um, but it also has another power. You can absorb its energy, which will heal you and deal radiant damage around you, but it consumes the ball. Okay. I'm going to hold it. Uh, you can also throw it as if throwing a ball. It feels tangible. Oh, you, can, you can pass it. As an attack action, you may pass the ball. Fear. Catch. Give me a rain as if you were making a ranged spell attack. One. <laughs> Fear. Catch. You throw it way too short, and as it hits the ground, it vanishes. The next one appears over here. Gold ball, please. <laughs> as it explodes. Uh, Kayla. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Your speed is zero next turn. Yeah. So is this dude hovering? Hovering in the air. Is he attacking? Is he looking? Uh, <laughs> What's this prick here? That looks like a skeleton. A skeleton in, in cloths, loincloth, and clutching a curved blade just lands. <laughs> Harry Housen and Jason the Argonaut style. Harry Housen. Okay. Hmm? Can I, like. I want to attack more than just one dude. <laughs> but there's so much more you could do, Mark. What okay. can I do? I could put the flicker on, but it defaults to certain lights and stuff. Uh. I would like to move and attack that one there. Okay, well, move yourself and make the attack roll. Yeah. Good. So defensive. <laughs> <laughs> um. What do I do? Yeah. 18. Okay, you annihilate this thing. It just crumples to bones. Like, as soon as your blade touches it, it is destroyed. You may remove it from the battlefield. Um, can I move and attack the other one then with my extra attack? Um, so how much movement have you used? You've five. used five, so you can move another 35 feet, and if you can reach it, yes you can. 25. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you push. rush up, you smash one, and then you carry on running. Sword comes into the next one. 11. That is not enough. This one, like, the, mo- the m- momentum of your movement kind of takes some of the wind out of your blow and it manages to duck underneath. This kind of... <laughs> as it's like bones clack and clatter together. Um, that was Kalar's go. Do, 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 do. The undead floating eye um, hovers. I have to make sure and see if it's capable. It seems to turn its attention purely on Kalar, because um, it's seen you attack something. Um, and it shoots an eye ray out at you. Can you make a constitution saving throw, please? No decks? No, constitution saving throw. You don't want to make a Nope. <laughs> You feel this beam kind of hit you and it's trying to freeze you in place but you shrug off the magic of whatever it is um, and it doesn't seem to take any effect. Uh, fear. Cool. Um. <coughs> if you want a one. <laughs> what a dick. Does that right now? How far am I from the <laughs> other side yeah. of the room? <laughs> okay. It's almost like I designed it so they're at opposite ends, so if you fuck it up, you have to run <laughs> to the other side. I could only get to there, I think, if I did my dash. Uh, Don't forget, you've got your compact, your mirror compact as well. It's a bonus action. Shit. Shit! It's a once per day, but... 
isn't it? I am a going to... So it's an undead beholder. So well, I don't know what the difference between that is. A lot less okay. scariness. Yeah. It's scary, <laughs> but it's not a live it. one. Okay. It doesn't project an anti-magic field in front of it. That's the main thing. Beholder's ridiculous. Um. What would you like to do? I think I'm just going to make my way there. You, so make, I'm gonna, you start running. Yeah, I want to run, but can I... You, so, if I'm... You can attack can as I part of your movement. Can I split my dash action? Yes. My, yeah. Yes, it's, you know, um, it's movement. And then use you can attack an attack any on part. that yep. on the way, yep. so that I can get to here, but I'll attack this guy yes, on the way. Yes, absolutely. You okay. won't get your sneak attack. <laughs> oh, actually, no, you would, because you're going... No, you're not an assassin, so no. You won't get sneak attack, but these things do not seem... They're very brittle. Uh, Kalar's blow oh, psh, annihilated. Um, you just, okay. within an instant, the f- you just as you run past, you smash it with a dagger. It crumples into bones, barely even getting a chance. Uh, How so much more? Uh, right to the four, one four, before four, the glyph. Six, yeah. Right there. Yep. You can see this glowing sphere tantalizingly in front of you. Um, the skelly bobs are going to go. One's going to turn on Kalar. It's going to go. Kalar. Um, Kalar, only one, the only, you're the only one that's close enough. 15 to hit. Exactly. Yep. You're going to take um, seven points of damage as a rusty blade cuts into your flesh. Flesh. Um, as it slices at you. At initiative count 10. So I'll do it one, two, three, four. Ooh. Um, so the spinning dais with the dragon hands, it stops on the direction facing fear, um, and the draconic head breathes out this plume of black inky smoke. Um, I need you to give me a dexterity saving throw, I and your evasion will count. Evasion. Yep. So if you have evasions, natural twenty. Oh you God. take no damage. You kind of see this thing coming. Jesus. You basically kip up off the wall, backflip as this pile of smoke just. You watch as any kind of like you do feel it get close to your skin, it feels like this would drain the life out of you. The skeleton is unaffected. Um, Cromsby. Uh, I'm just going to attack the skeleton heading towards me with my club. So you just run up to it, give it a bonk, give it a whack. Okay. Oh, that's a natural one. Very good. Just do it again. It kind of just stumbles back as you kind of swing wildly. Um, anything else you want to do? Or is that it? That's it. Okay. Um, at the top of the round, everybody make a constitution saving throw, please. Oh, a natural one again. Oh, oh my nice. God. 20. I'm not using that dice as bollocks. <laughs> if you got above 12... No. Um, anybody who got above 12, you're going to take three necrotic damage. Anybody who got below is taking six. Um, this miasma, this black inky smoke, just <sighs> sucks away the life force in you. Um, and there seems to be no way to avoid it apart from resisting it with pure uh, strength of will. Um, six. Or Kalon. I'm gonna... You're moving at zero. Yeah. So I'm just going gonna... to... Which, where am I? Am I on this? Yeah. Sure. I'm going to try and hit that with a, just a fireball. Okay. 120 feet. 14 plus. That's a hit, it destroys yeah. it. The oh. fire just ignites the ramshackle bones, uh, turning it to <laughs> dust. It just lays me back with it. Just completely evaporates. Please get in the game. Um, would you like to do anything else? Or are you done? I can't move. Kayla, <laughs> what would you like to do? Crappy skeleton in front of you. So, the beholder, can I hit him if I like get... He is floating about 20 feet in the air. Just kind of hovering in the middle of the room, just like rotating around, just like... Mm, okay. Nice, nice noise. Is I'm, that I'm king of noises. Is, <laughs> <that> <laughs> <thing>? <laughs> mm. is there any like masonry or anything I can pick up, throw at him? Uh, you can try. You can try and pull some flagstones off the floor or something and throw those at them, but it's up to you. You can try. Uh, let me mash up this dude first. Okay. 13? 
13 is just enough. You manage to just about catch it um, and clobber it to death. Uh, back, back of the Batleth kind of back blow, sending it sprawling. Yeah, okay. So... So what? I'm going to... I might leave that last skeleton. Sword. You'll be fine. Um... Can I try and pick something up and throw it at the whole earth? Can, can I try? rage, please? Yep, yeah. so you're going to need to give me a strength check. So you're currently raging, which is your bonus action. And as part of your rage, I'm going to say you're trying to pick up sort of, sort of, you know, a bit of broken stone upon the floor, like some broken flagstone. Okay. Can I also... You have advantage with bear while raging. So I'm advantage on That's, strength checks. You check. always get bear. Okay. You always have bear. Advantage on strength checks. Yeah. Uh, exact same roll. Double 17. Which I think is going to be like 20 or 21 for uh, you or something. Strength. It was straight up strength. Just plain strength. Plus, Plus three. three so 20. 20. Yeah, you managed to. You rip like a big chunk of flagstone off the floor. Um, you can attempt to throw it at this thing if you like. I would like to do that. Okay, so you're going to make, it is going to be, you're going to use your strength because it's a thrown weapon. Um, but I'm not gonna, you can't really use your proficiency because it's not a weapon you're proficient in, it's an improvised weapon. So it's just d20 plus, plus three for strength. But can it not be um, at advantage because I'm throwing something in the form of a bear? Mm, that's get... strength checks, not attack rolls. This is precision. Okay. You're trying to throw it with precision now. Yeah. Um, you, I would say that if you really wanted to, you could recklessly attack and then anybody else would have advantages to attack you. 15. 15. Just manages, you kind of hurl it like a discus. <laughs> uh, I'll say it deals a uh, big chunk of stone like that. Let's say it deals a d10. Because you, you have to physically pick it up off the ground. Plus strength, obviously. Is that a 1? That's a 10. Mm, no, nope. 10 nine. is double zero. Uh, yeah. So it's a 1. My bad. <laughs> it's a 1 plus 3. 4. Uh, I just kind of. Clips this thing, it doesn't react at all. This undead nature, it just is like, you just kind of rip part of its flesh, seeing some bone and muscle beneath it. That's pretty much it. Uh, fear. Nope, sorry, it is oh. a big uglies go. Before I finish as well, can I shout at six and say, Six, wait at that altar? I'm doing that. <laughs> um, it's going to. One, two, three, four. One. Uh, six, it rotates on you and an eye beam fires. Constitution oh, saving throw. Killer. Constitution saving throw. This is on you. Cat reflexes. I shit myself. <laughs> Paralyzed. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of your turn. You repeat the saving throw at the end of your turn. Uh, you watch as, as six is like, okay, cat. <laughs> as he's hit by the spear. I just a little bit. Like... Uh, fear, now it's your game. Okay. I know. <laughs> okay. I know that going across the runes brings things in, but there's not really a choice. Jump. So, uh, yeah, can I try and jump over the runes sure. and go in? Athletics check. Or an acrobatics, I'll be kind. So nice. 20. You backflip over. We <laughs> 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 are! From a standing story. Um, yeah, you basically like, land right next to it. Uh, you pick up the ball. Can I pick up the ball mm -hmm. and then can I go to the edge here so that I can see that? So let's see. Hole. So you add technically, I'll say five feet, 10, 15, 20. Well, no, what I was going to do is I was going to pick that up yeah. and use my compact mirror. And then to bamf yourself. Bamf myself. Now, what's the range? The I think we said 30 feet, didn't we? I didn't get. I think it's 30 feet. I think it's a misty step, basically. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Whoops. You can bamf yourself to here, and then you could. You've still got movement. You've still got 25 feet of movement left. Can I. And then you could dash. In can theory. I dash? Yeah. And can you I, can can I jump over the things again? Yeah, yeah, misty step is 30. Yep, give me another acrobatics. Nice. Same again. Easy. And you get up and then dunk it. Uh, you just slam the golden energy, and as it as the ball of orb of light hits the mouth, it sucks it in, um, and you hear a bee. <laughs> nice sound effects. Uh, Still annoying. Why, thank you, my dear. That's one to you. But how long can you last? <laughs> uh, Skinny Bob's turn. Where's the 
two dead skelly bobs that you guys killed. Didn't really look well. From the ceiling. Does a new glowing orb appear? Yes, it appears next on the one next to the paralyzed six. <laughs> um, it seems to alternate between the two. Um, so that's the skelly bobs go. Well, actually, no, one lands. The one that was remaining simply turns. Goes after Kalar. Curved blade. Nope. That's like a seven. You just parry it aside. Um, but the next thing that happens is. One, two, three, four. Fear. <laughs> oh, actually, and Kalar. Uh, this dragon mouth, uh, this thing stops, points in your direction. <laughs> Inky blackness opens up. Dexterity saving throws, please. I have a thing. Uh, danger sense, yes. You have advantage. 17, do I succeed? You do, you take no damage. Nine! Nine. Nine. Oh, I'll put it here. Not you, Wow! Seven necrotic damage. Woohoo! Fucking roll a one on every single dice. Wow, thank you! Seven necrotic damage as this kind of inky blackness again peels away at your life force. Um, Cromsby. Uh, can I cast Polymorph on the big <laughs> boulder? Undead boulder. <laughs> yeah. What saving throw is it for me? Uh, a wisdom, wisdom saving throw. What's your DC? 14. Uh, it fails. What do you Polymorph it into? <laughs> um, into a snail. Into a snail? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, yeah, you Polymorph it into a tiny snail. <laughs> um, technically, yes. a, okay. No, this is important to know. So, yeah, it just. <laughs> Into a tiny snail, just crawls along. <laughs> ah. that, that's what happens to it. Um, I'd say a snail has four hit points, three hit points, one hit point. It's a snail. <laughs> it probably has, points. and it's on the floor now, right? What that's generous. <laughs> it is quite like, generous. I, like, it is on the floor now. Yes. Um, the main thing to note is if it takes damage, it reverts back. So. Um, it takes damage, it's gonna die! No, it takes damage, it turns it takes back. back. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can I not like, go over to it and pick it up? You, yeah, yeah, absolutely, you've still got your turn, you pick it up. <laughs> like, stick it in your pocket. Yeah, you put it in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, you put it in your pocket, there you go. no problem. <laughs> yeah, you just pick it up into the pocket, it's a bit slimy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, job done. Casual. Um, Casual to like. At the top of the round, Souvenir. I need everybody to make constitution saving throws. And now that includes the snail, sadly, because it's not immune to necrotic damage. Oh, shit. Oh, no, natural one. <laughs> natural 20. One. Natural 20 for the snail? Oh my god. <laughs> I got a five. Oh. 21. Right, so who got above 12? I got a natural 20. So you, you and the snail, you guys are going to take snick six. Snick. As the snail <laughs> takes damage, your pocket is ripped open <laughs> as this thing rawr, on the floor, like rolling around. Um, <laughs> the creature returns. The, those of you who got under 12, it's 12 necrotic damage. 12. Six. Wait. At the end of your turn, make a saving throw against par paralysis. Hold on a minute. You pass. Uh, okay. I saw what you rolled. Am I not resistant to damage? <clears throat> Not all. No, you're bare totem, aren't you? Yeah. So you take half. Smashy, yeah. But you need to remember that. I, I'm not gonna remember that. So you take Can half I of whatever I tell you. Three last time then. Yeah. I'll, I won't do it for the other yeah. one. Oh. No, I don't think you were raging when the skeleton hit you and stuff. Anyway, so the beholder move. It's at the end of your turn that you save. So Kalar. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, dude. It's the way it works. You can see six is just. Uh, is the beholder still floating? Uh, it's kind of like on its side where it's just burst out of Cromsby's <laughs> pocket. Who's like, ah! You know, the trousers have like ripped, like one pant leg is completely gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like gold coins everywhere. Like, what else do you keep in your pockets? Like, anything in your pockets is gone. Handkerchief. Handkerchief is like on its face. It's like in its mouth. It's like, ah! No, you can keep that. <laughs> <laughs> This is a joke. What are you, what are you doing, Kayla? Got any trousers? It's meant to be serious. <coughs> um, can I attack this dude? Yeah, it's right in front of you. And um, yes. yeah. Keep fighting the skeletons that respawn. You fools! No, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're just going to attack you if you don't kill them. So they're still worth killing. Well, you're twenty-three. 
Why did you roll twice? Because I'm raging, so I have advantage on melee. You have advantage melee. on strength I checks, have, not uh, on melee attacks. I have, uh, when you make a melee weapon attack using strength, you gain a bonus. Oh, wait, no, you reckless. gain a bonus. Yeah. Yes, yeah, to damage. No, no, rolls. no, that's not reckless. That's to damage. That's, that's to damage. Reckless, you get a bonus. I guess, yeah. yeah. So. I'll take the lowest one, I guess. You still get yeah, destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the pre you don't learn if you don't do these things. You don't learn. Yeah, but it's not reckless attack. It's not, yeah, no. But it's a, a bonus to damage rolls and reckless attack is the thing. Right? Uh, so you attack that, you've still got move. And I've got another attack. Yep. Can I attack the beholder? Yes. Yep. Plunge <laughs> your great, your bat left into it. Thirteen. Uh, it's undead hide is unnaturally thick. It doesn't quite pull through enough to do damage. Um, That's all I can do. The polder will turn an eye ray upon you mm -hmm. as you attack it. I'm going to roll to see which one I get. <laughs> oh, uh, a beam. This time it's a dexterity saving throw, please. Can I get advantage on that because it's a dex dangerous saving? Uh, I you get it on spells, so yes, I will say for now. Spells. You do. Yes, I will count this as a spell. Uh, dex, you say? Dex. 17. Okay. One of its eye rays launches out, and it still strikes you, but you manage to shrug off some of the damage. But this seems to literally disintegrate the flesh from yourself. Half of 32 is 16, 16, and then you half that again because it's force damage, which you're resistant to. Eight. Eight. You take eight points of force damage as this beam <laughs> basically like evaporates some of the flesh on Kalar's arm, and you're like, Argh! but you're raging, so you don't really care. That's really um, nasty. Uh, yes, it is. It's very scary. Um, and that is It's Go Fear. <clears throat> Hello. Can I shout? Will somebody get the next orb, please? And then I would like to jump. Mm. I will say that you noticed there. that monsters dropped even when nobody crossed over the, the glyphs. Oh, okay. Uh, it was like an activation glyph to start everything off. How, many, how far am I from the beholder? You can do it with a bonus action, with cunning bonus action. action. For you. And you get sneak attack because you have ally. Five feet. True. Yep, I'll do that. So you come, you just charge across the stone floor, leaping up, dagger in hand. <laughs> uh. No, it's not gonna hit. It was not cocked a bit. It was cocked. It was not totally cocked. cocked. It's, totally it's not gonna hit. No, you kind of, and you miss time the jump, you whoosh, swipe to the side as it slashes open. Have I got air. any movement left with me? Oh, no. Um, what are you? 40. Here? You went 40, so yeah, you'd have 20 more feet. You can skirt around it as long as you don't leave its threatened area. Mm. Alright, we'll get an attack of opportunity. I'm if you leave its threatened area. Yes. But you could scoot around behind it. I'm not gonna move. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, skilly bobs. Does manage to a skeleton skirts around the side, misses completely. Natural one. Blah, blah. <laughs> Just kind of slashes you from the holder. Um, Cromsby, uh, can I run towards the glowing orb? Yes. That direction. So you as wish, fast as my yes. little legs. So you're going to disengage. Coming. Yeah. So you don't get attack. Yeah. Ooh, that skeleton's going to get to get you, but oh, that's, that's right. a bit easier. Fine. 15, 20, 25, because you're only a little dwarf. <laughs> Uh, natural 20 with the attack of opportunity, of course. Uh, so that's going to be 10 points as this skeleton just clips you on the back. Oh, uh, with its curved blade. Um, and then the rotating center dais. One, two, three. Points at a direction where there is nobody. <laughs> fills it with this uh, black ink like substance. Um, and that is the top of the round. So Constitution saves everybody. Natural 20. Natural one again. Fourteen. Bam. Fourteen. Wait, 19. that was my dice, I think. So taking everybody but Fia nice. is taking two. You take one, Kim. Fia, you're taking four necrotic as the noxious air. Four. Four. Right. You take two. I take two. Yeah, yeah, you take two, yeah. So everybody but Fia is oh, taking right, two. 
<coughs> um, and then we are up to um, six and Kmart. Six. You're not paralyzed. Pick up the ball. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, yeah, you sense that you can probably kind of consume it and it will radiate healing and then also disperse damage around you as well. Or you can just put it Or you can oh, score, the score the gold. I'm going to pick it up. Yes. 5, 10, 15. You got 30, 30 feet of movement. 20, 25, 30. You can. Can you only use your sprint once, short rest, I think? I can do it as long as there's zero okay. movement yeah, next time. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Now you can try and throw it and try and score it by throwing. I'm not gonna do that. Okay. I'm going to choice. as an action mage hand it into the hole. Oh, oh, that's a very good play. Yeah, the mage hand works perfectly. It's you conjure the mage hand, the claw kind of wraps around it, and the, the ball takes its form, and you're like, boom, boop, <laughs> um, bing. Uh, ah, excellent use of mage hand. Thank you. Ah, it's getting tedious now, I imagine, the noxious life force stripping you away. Uh, commentary, thank you. Kayla, uh, this now appears over here. Isn't it? Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Kayla? <clears throat> Having a long old think. Beholder. Attack then. Beholder. Attack. <clears throat> Kill that. Make them Butter. dice rolls. <laughs> We're over time. Oh, have we? Alright, sorry. But we can do a little bit. We can keep working yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we did start a little bit. Because we started a bit late. Uh, nine plus six is fifteen. Fifteen just hits. Um, we can always take a picture and resume. Yeah. Six, seven, nine. Nine points. Yeah. Again, oh. the creature doesn't seem to react to these blows. You are definitely hacking away, cutting away flesh, but um, mm. doesn't seem to do anything else. Second attack. Doesn't look injured or anything, does it? I mean, you are hacking off flesh. It's just it's undead. It doesn't feel sure. pain. Destroy it. It's hard to judge how injured it may that be. That one. That Meh. one. Into the stone. Ching! Chinks of, of flagstone flying up. Um, Beholder, right? Beholder. Uh, he's going to. One, two, three, four, one, six. Seeing you score the dunk. Um, deck saving throw, please. 17 plus. Okay. Uh, one, 18. Stop rolling. Maths. Ah, uh, that's gonna be 22. That's halved. No, actually, no, I'll do it properly. I was gonna roll half the dice, but actually it wouldn't technically work out that way. Half of 33 is... 17. 17. Thank you. Force damage as you feel Very part well. of your body disintegrated. <laughs> you yeah. desperately try and leap out of the way. Oh. It's just like a hairball. Just goes Fear. Hi. Uh, KR is still next to it. I'm going to try and attack them for Holder again. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Three in a row. I know. What it's, the fuck? Those dice. I think you should stop using that dice. I put it in the microwave. Very wise, yeah. It's gone. I think get it's rid of that thing. Never being used again. Um, would you like to do anything else? Bonus action, move action. <coughs> you can disengage with your bonus. Boners. I would. Can I disengage and start moving towards the? You can. The skeleton will get an attack opportunity. Will it still even if I disengage? The skeleton will. The beholder won't. Yeah, it's this one you move into there. Yeah. This one's fine. Fine. So you move, I'll roll this. That's only a 14 to hit you? No. no. You dodge out of the way, you duck and tumble. 15, 20, 20 25, yep, 30, 30, 30, 35. Well, Keep going. Because you can go 60, right? So no, I can. Why can yeah, I with go the, 60? Oh no, because yeah, you disengage. Yeah, no, I can't do that. Then, yeah. That's as far as I can go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you get to there, that's Fears Go. Skelly Bobs. Converge on Kayla. I like her. 
Crongsby is after lumbering skeletons <laughs> in terms of dexterity. And... So Crombsby, that is going to be a hit because that's 19. You're going to take five points of damage as it cuts you and you're back of your calves. Oh! Six, 16. Uh, yeah. It's only three points as this skeleton like, eh, chops you. Um, Kalar, we've got two on you. That's a miss. I'm down. That's also a miss. You're down. That's a miss. You're oh, shit. Fuck. Balls down. Uh, no one's close. Um, the rotating sarcophagi. Four. Points in the direction that nobody is in, luckily. Uh, <laughs> breathing out inky Jesus. darkness. Cromsby. Uh, can I smash the skeleton? You absolutely can. Mm -hmm. Get that club. Get that club. Fuck's sake. High <laughs> rollers. I'm guessing no. Six. No, that is not a successful hit. Uh, can I. Just like. Can I run towards six? Yeah. Is that Yeah. It's about there. Skeleton is. That's 19. That's going to be four points as. Cut you again as you run past. Oh! Chopping. Your clothes are now shredded. With the pocket that exploded into Beholder, your now tunic is now ripped and shredded to pieces <laughs> from all these cuts. Your clothes are basically falling off you. Um, so you've still got bonus action left. I just remembered something. Because mm. I'm raging, mm. I didn't add my two bonus points to my attack on Beholder. I will definitely add those extra two. Every little helps. Does. Anything else for Crumsby? Uh, <clears throat> no. So, at the top of the round, it's constitution saves for everybody. I fail. Oh, you automatically fail. It's two strikes. Oh, what? Fuck. That's two strikes? You take damage when you're unconscious. It two counts fails. as a crit. Two fails if he, if he fails and... Like, wait, it's your turn next, right? It is indeed. If he oh, fails, fuck. he's dead straight up. Top of the round. Kalar on six. I fail. Technically, Again. Kalar can choose to go first and may be able to reach you. 17. Two. Attack. Uh, no, sorry, that was my constitution. Oh, constitution saving throw. throw, yeah. So on your constitution saving throw, sorry. <laughs> I forgot that not all of you just take death saving throws. Um, what'd you get? 17? 17. Nine. Uh, so those of you who took nine, you guys are going to take seven necrotic. You're going to take three. Halved again to one. Fucking barbarians. Oh no, I didn't have my thing. So it's not nine. It's eleven. Still wouldn't be enough. Yeah, okay. Like seven. Six and Kalar. And I think we'll probably make this <coughs> the last Fuck. thing we do. Yeah, okay, so, so can I minus one? Uh, seven. Minus seven. Seven. seven more. Seven more I wanna go for six. Okay, so you're gonna take one, two, three attacks for opportunity. Yeah. The holder misses with its bite. Oof. One Oof. skeleton is gonna hit you. The other skeleton, 14 AC? Is that uh, 15. 15. So one skeleton hits you. You're going to take seven, half to three. And then you get next to six. And then you can attempt a medicine check. Uh, I have healing potions. Can I if you've got a healing potion, you can pour it into his face. Yeah. I'd like to pour a healing potion, a potion into his face. <laughs> uh, and then can I also kill the skeleton? No, pouring a potion is an action. But I got an extra. Potion is so how it works. You gotta attack. You gotta attack, attack to get the secondary attack. It's not two actions. So two, uh, two. Pouring a I... potion is six seconds of you going, come on, drinky okay. drink. Can I sort of like just position myself so like you can try. has to go but past me? He can easily just move to the side and cut down. You can but try. You have to disengage me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna nuzzle up fact is, is you don't suspect I'm it just, would go for a I'm downed foe while there there. is a living one standing and 5 <laughs> HP for 6. I'm just like, he's my bud, I'm standing um, over him. Does reset your death saving throws, however. But I'm healed. Yes, but it means that like those two, it, you reset them. If you if you go down again, which I highly suspect you might, <laughs> um, <laughs> it means that you'll start fresh on three death saving throws. Cool. Um, so and I think we're going to have to leave it there because we're 10 minutes over, which makes up the 10 minutes we started. We'll take a picture of this. Um, you are two goals of your four needed. Um, and things are looking a little bit grim. Mm. One person's already gone down. I imagine you guys are a bit low on HPs. Oh, you yes. won't be because you're oh, fucking made of hit points. My little fragile for this <laughs> challenge. <laughs> the I mean, brave challenge. Being paralyzed probably didn't help as well. You can eat the balls. Any magic you can use or are you just all fire spells? I mostly choose. Probably you're a healer. 
Yeah. Over there in here, Luke. That's why I'm running. <laughs> you, can't, you can only go 25 feet. Yes. Yeah, it's the only tiny little <laughs> legs. So I'm afraid legs. things I can do. Um, but yes. I, I hope you enjoyed that, it. everybody. We will oh. be back. Oh. Blue. We'll Cavity. be back uh, next Friday. Um, I guess we'll quickly try and wrap through any donations. Or do we want to try and what yeah, do we, we want to do? do? So yeah. we'll, we'll be stopping on the D&D stream. Thanks Stop for watching. Thanks very much for watching on D&D. Yep. Yay. Thank you. We'll be back next Friday for more Uncharted Territory where we'll see if the crew can finish off this little <laughs> game. Okay. Okay. Next Friday, same yeah. time, same place. Enjoy Dragon Friends coming up next. Yeah, and Catching we'll also by. be on our own oh, yes. channel <laughs> on Sunday. On Sunday on twitch.tv forward slash Yokescast for our regular, regular campaign. campaign as well. Same, enjoy that. So Not join us today. That's um, three hours earlier. 5 p.m. BST. On I think it's 9 or 10 a.m. PDT, I think. Um, oh yeah, take me. Take right, let's yeah. try and rattle through these. Nightjar donated. Missed you guys. The high rollers withdrawal was real. Thank you very much, Nightjar. Thank you. Uh, Metamanu donated with a half hundo. Hello. Welcome back. Yes. I missed you very.